Good morning. Welcome to my thought for the day. I'm looking at uh, 1 Samuel 30 verses 11 <coughs> to 15. And perhaps it's best if I read them to you before I give my thought on it. Um, th this is uh, being read from the um, new, the Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And they found an Egyptian in the open country and brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate. They gave him water to drink. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and water to drink and two clusters of raisins. And when he'd eaten, his spirit revived, for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, To whom do you belong and where are you from? He said, I'm a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me behind because I fell sick three days ago. We had made a raid upon the Negev of the Cherethites and upon that which belongs to Judah and upon the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Will you take me down to this band? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this band. And when he'd taken him down, behold, they were spread over all the land. So this is a section in the middle of the story of David pursuing the Amalekites who had raided the, the, the town that he and his family and all his men had lived in. Um, had, they'd settled there and they had homes and wives and children and property and animals. And David had been away with his men and it took them three days to come home. And when they came home, they found that the place was on fire, had been burned. And everything, everything, every living thing had been taken out of it. It was the Malachites that did it. And they were, after they wept and after the distress, nearly, nearly, uh, nearly stoning David, holding David responsible for what had happened. They, they wanted a scapegoat. They wanted to take out their, their distress and upset. Their wives, their children, everything they owned had been taken away. And uh, David strengthened himself in the Lord and inquired of the Lord, should he chase after them? And the Lord said, yes. And so as they were on their way, they encounter this Egyptian, um, this man in the open country, and they brought him to David. And David gave him sustenance, um, water and a cake of raisins and figs. And he revived and he tells his story. And he was in the raiding party that had destroyed Ziklag with fire. He was one of those responsible. He was a slave or a servant. And his master, when he was sick, had abandoned him three days previously. That shows us that this band had a long start on David. Um, they were already three days on their journey. Um, this man had been three days without water and food, abandoned by his master. And what's interesting to me is that David's men and David did not take out vengeance on this man. He was part of it. They were going to kill David, who had had nothing to do with the raid on Ziklag. But he was held to be responsible because he hadn't brought them home at the right time. And uh, they could have immediately taken up this man and stoned him. He was responsible. He does say, we burned Ziklag with fire. He was part of that raiding party. But to me, this little incident shows David as a forerunner of Jesus. That even those who have served the enemy, um, enthusiastically, perhaps, who've been part of the enemy's work, when the enemy abandons, when they, when they leave the service of the, the enemy, let's put it that way, the Saviour welcomes them with open arms and gives them everything they need to be restored. And I don't doubt 
that he joined David's band. This is a picture of salvation. You know, the enemy robs us of everything. The enemy abandons us. The enemy doesn't love us. The enemy, the enemy doesn't love us. He has no concern for us at all. He's a thief and a robber. And he wants to steal from us everything that is precious. And he gets people into his clutches and he leads them down destructive paths on addiction, on, on drunkenness, on, on, on sexual immorality, all sorts of things. And when they come to their senses, they have nothing left. They're exhausted. They're on their last legs. They have no hope. And then Jesus finds them. The shepherd, David, finds this man. David was the shepherd, the picture of Jesus, the shepherd looking for the sheep. Here is this lost sheep, abandoned, destitute, in dire straits. And there's no recrimination. There's no punishment. David doesn't punish this man for his part in the raiding of Ziklag. Instead, he restores him to health and strength. This man had been sick. He's restored to health and strength by David and his men. It's a wonderful picture of what Jesus does for each of us. He takes, he takes what has been destroyed and beaten down by the enemy riddled with guilt, riddled with... I imagine when this man saw David and his men and knew who they were, he must have felt really guilty for what he had done as part of that raiding party. The thief comes to kill, steal and destroy, it says in John's Gospel, chapter 10. But I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And this wonderful picture of restoration. It includes water and bread, figs and raisins, wine. There's wine there in the picture of the raisins. Jesus, the source of all goodness, takes each of us, the scraps of humanity, and restores us, gives us back what has been stolen from us, and more, lets us join his band and follow him as he goes and he restores everything for his men. Jesus is in the business of restoration. He will restore everything that the locust has eaten. That's a quote from, uh, oh, no, <laughs> jo, jo, Joab, jo, jo. you know, you know where I'm talking about. Um, it's gone from my mind for the moment. Anyway, senior moment. Have a great day tomorrow, today and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.